Okay. All right, gentlemen, we're going to start with our learning sponsors. A year of learning soon on the like in memory of Malcolm Perlman and Philip Mann. And Israel Dove had been a Rav Tzvi Hirsch, and Beryl been a Rav Tzvi Hirsch. Joseph May had been a Rav Tzvi Hirsch, and Yerifka Pearl Raz Nabasa Rav Tzvi Hirsch. And memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. A Rav Tzvi Hirsch been Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Ben Ephraim, Israel Dove had been a Rav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim been a Rav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Basa Rav Tzvi Hirsh, Miriam Basa Rav Tzvi Hirsh. Pesel Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh. Shall share her children and grandchildren in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel Ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Fedebush and family in memory of her husband, Dr. Ariel Paul Fedebush, Royal Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends. In memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edel Basiako, Leslie and Gail Kaplan. In memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sadell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Friends of Avi Gidler, Avra Meir Ben Shimon and Martha Gidler, Sharna Bas Yeshaya. Children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren of Toby Paris. Sarah Toba Bad Yisrael Dove in her memory. Friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim. Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata Bas Asher. Month of learning by Mordechai and Miriam Burr, in memory of his father, Yaakov Ben Mordechai. Friends from Yarmouth East, in memory of Miriam and Michael Schiffer's son, Zev David Ben Shimon Alevi. David and Mindel Cheslow, in memory of his mother, Bela Bas Meir. Marsha Federbuch, in memory of her husband, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. Gary and Marsha Schrager, in memory of his father, David Ben Yosef, and his mother, Freda, Freda Bas Hendel. A week of learning by Shelley and Oscar Moll, in memory of her father, Shlomo Rubin Ben Minyamin. Larry Fish and Vicky Rabinovich Fish, in memory of his father, Avram David Ben Shlomo Raphael, and his mother, Bat Yechai Bas Yisrael Yitzchak. A day of learning plus Torah fun. Uh, today by Marvin and Dasi Bienenfeld, in memory of his father, Avram Moshe ben Harav Shlomo Zali. Also today, a day of learning plus Torah fun by Judy Fuchs, in memory of her mother-in-law, Yenta Bas Nachum. Today, also a day of learning by Hilda Mirwas, Shelley Orgel and families, in memory of their father, David ben Pesach. May Hashem is having Aliyah, Krenka Rafiya, Velta Yeshira Hashem Israel, a good Amen. Oh, there's a yeah, I told you there, there. Okay. Where are we today in the Gemara? On Kafvav Amud Aleph, right? Couple lines down. Two lines. Tanya Amar Rabbi Hananya. Hey, Ben Akavya. Okay. I always think of him because that's my middle name, Marikavya, Kanani. Oh, yeah? And he was there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what did he say? Yeah? Okay. What did he say following on the statement of who was exempt in a certain mitzvot? Kodves farim tefillin mezuzot. Describe the Torah. Fillin and it hain the they and the merchants that sell those items. And the merchants of their merchants. You've got the wholesalers and you've got the retailers. Okay. The whole house came to Malachat Shemaim and all those who are involved in the work of heaven. Latuye Mochre Tchele. That includes those who sell the tcheles, okay? The uh, blue threads that may or may not be attached to the tower. Turin mi kriyat shma, exempt from kriyat shma, uminat filas, uminat filin, and from where it is. Mi komets vot ha'amurot b'torah, Rabbi Yossi to satisfy the words of Rabbi Yossi Hagli. 
What? That's only when they're well. When, uh, that's what I was just like what well, you just told me what I was just telling you. Somebody's got online there some back room. Okay. Haya Rabbi Yossi Agrili Omer, he used to say, I was saying the mitzvah, paturmana mitzvah. One who was involved in a mitzvah is exempt from the mitzvah. No, 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 no
פטורים מן הסוכה ביום, וחייבים בלילה. Okay, they are exempt during the day, but they are obligated at night. Shomrei ha'ir balayla, okay, those watchmen at night, peturim min asuka balayla, v'chayavim bayom. They're exempt at night, but they are obligated during the day. Shomrei ha'ir, bein bayom u bein balayla. If you have watchmen that have both shifts, okay, both... All right, evening and morning shifts. Okay, peturim in asuka, bein bayomu, bein balai. They are exempt both during the day and the night. Now we have a distinction here in the Gemara between shomrei, okay, these shomrim, shomrei ir, and other shomrim that are out in the field that are watching for protecting produce or protecting in, uh, in uh, orchards or things like that. Okay, so the Gemara continues. Okay, Shomrei Ganot Upardasim, those watchmen who are concerned about the gardens, okay, or the fields and the uh, orchards. Peturin Bein Beyom Ubein Belayim. They are exempt both for day and for night. So the Gemara suggests, so why don't they build a sukkah there? Okay, and then they can uh, dwell in it, right? Abayamar says Abay as follows. The Pasuk says, Teshvu, that you need to inhabit in it. Ke'en taduru similar in a manner by which you can dwell in a fixed house location, right? And that's not the case for these watchmen, right? Now, Rav is gonna give a little different perush. Rav Amar, partsa kora legana. Namely, what happens? That a, a, I'll call it a breach, okay? Invites robbers. What do we mean by that? If the field watcher or the orchard watcher builds a sukkah, let's say in one part of the field, the ganavim are gonna figure out, hey, we can come in from a different location in the field and still come and take, steal the probe. Okay? So that's part of the issue. That's Rava's explanation. My benaihu, what's the difference between them? Ika benaihu. The kamanter karya the perida. Why? Because the question is, at what point is he able to watch the piles or the stalks or the groups of grain or farad? Right? In other words, okay, maybe, well, that's one option. Okay? The other option is just the opposite. Okay? That if he doesn't use that pile for his sukkah, but he piles at one place as if to say, well, the watching is done. He can build a sukkah in another, uh, it's a different shot, okay? In another location, the ganavim can still get at, okay? All right, so that's the point, okay? The period. But Rashi says, my shot. Uh, yeah, but uh, some, but, but Koren brought two or three different shot came on this, okay? Now, cholim umisham sheh. Okay, sick people and their servants. What's their status, right? Tanu Rabbanu, right? A new bright. Cholesh Amru, when we're talking about a sick person, lo cholesh yesh bo sakana. We're not simply talking about a person who's on their deathbed, so to speak. Seriously, ela afilu cholesh ein bo sakana. But even a person who's not significantly ill. What do we mean? Even if he has some uh, problem with his eyes. Or even if he has a headache. Okay, Shimon ben Gamriel. One time I was uh, had problems with my eyes, Bikizari, and I was in the city of Caesarea. Vehitir Rabbi Yossi Berebi. And Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi, right, permitted me 
Vishen and me umisham shai chutz lesukkah to sleep for myself and my servants <laughs> to sit out to eat to dwell sleep actually outside the sukkah. Now why is this is this myself so significant? Who was the person that gave him the heter? Rabbi Yossi Berebi Okay. In other words, he was considered the chief pose of, of uh, Caesarea. Why? Caesarea, remember, was a major, major city with a number of both Tanaim at a time and later Amorim living there. Okay? It's the, right. Okay. So that's important. Now, next statement. Rav Shara, okay? The Rav Acha, Bardala, Le Migna Bechilta, Besuka. Rav actually permitted Rav Acha, Bardala, to do what? To sleep bechilta with a canopy, a cover, okay, a sheet or something, a mosquito net, whatever we want to call it like that, inside the sukkah. Why? Mishumbaki, because of the biting insects, In, whether it's flies, whether it was mosquitoes, things like that. Okay? Brava, Sharale the Rabbi Acha. Rabba permitted Rabbi Acha. Ba'ada le Migna. Bar Metaltota. And he permitted him to sleep outside the sukkah. Why? Mishum Sircha de Gargishta. Because of an odor that emanated from the ground, from the sand, whatever that it was. Did you say anything on that? Because earlier we learned you can't use something that's going to be odorless, like certain plants, where as they dry, they become odorous, and you can't use what's hot. Right. And here they built it on peat bar or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I, I had a problem. All right. They, they, no, they, okay. Yes. I found that it indicated l'chadchila, you're not supposed to put your sukkah on that kind of property. Okay, that's what the Koran had an interesting uh, note. Okay, if it's uh, but the if you build your sukkah and, and it's already then the ground, you know, then that's a different story. Yeah. All right, Rava Latame, Rava was uh, following his perspective. The Amar Rava Mitzta'er Partform and Hasuka, saying that somebody who is in it suffering situation because of the sukkah is exempt from the sukkah. And we also teach, he says, that sick people and those who are deserving them are exempt from the sukkah. Are we going to say that for a sick person, yes, they're exempt, but somebody who's suffering from the sukkah situation, no? Amre. So let's say the following. That the sick person and his assistants are exempt. Regarding somebody who is uncomfortable with the status of the sukkah itself, who patur misham shavlo. He is exempt, but his servants not. Okay, new piece from our Again, Mishnah. Ochlim achilat ari chutz We may eat a snack or a temporary food stuff, okay, in the outside the sun. The kama achilat ari. So we ask the question: What do we mean by a temporary food, all right, or a snack? Amar Rav Tarte otlat bayei. We're saying he, Rav Yosef, is suggesting that it's two or three egg volumes. Now, what's the problem with that? We're going to see. The Gemara is going to raise a challenge. By Abaye, Marley Abaye, Vaha Zimnin, Sagi'in, Sagi'lele, Inish, Bahachi. But aren't there times, asks Abaye, okay, that that's really sufficient for an actual meal? For a person, so how can you call that a snack? Okay, so the, the answer tells us, keva. 
And therefore, if it's sufficient for the person, it's equivalent to a fixed appropriate meal. Ela amar abai. So rather abai says to Rav Yosi, kidetaim bar be Rav. Like that when the students in the academy of Rav used to grab a snack, va'ayil lechala, and then they would go into the shiur, they would go into the lecture. Okay? Tanu Rabbanan, a new brighter. Ochlin achilat ari chutz This brighter also says it's permitted to eat a temporary or a snack outside the suit. Ve'ein yeshenin shenat ari chutz But we cannot chop a nap. We can't take a short dremel outside the sukkah. Okay, why? My Tama asks the Gemara. Amar Rab Ashi, says Rab Ashi. Zera Shema Yerodeim. A decree lest one fall into a deep sleep. Okay, Amar Le Abai. So Abai wants again the challenge, he said. Ela Ha Ditanya. But here we also have a bright that teaches us something else. Yeshen Adam Shenat Ari. But feeling. A person may take a little nap, okay, while they're with their tefillin on, right? keva, but not a deep sleep. Lichush shema yiradeim, lest the person fall into a deeper sleep. Amar Rav Yosef says Rav Yosef bereid the Rav Eli, the son of Rav Eli, b'moser shinatola acheri. What's he doing? He's telling his chavrusa, okay, or his friend who sits next to him and show, give me a poke if I start falling asleep real uh, strongly. Now, this is challenged. Matki flay rav mesharsha. He challenged it was the following. Arev cha, arev Okay, where are you going to tell this other guy? I'm going to tell Mel. Or I'm going to tell somebody else. I'll tell Sid, wake me up if I look like I fall asleep. No, somebody's got to wake you up. That's the point. That's the issue. He's going to need a guarantor as well. El Amar Rabba Bar Barchana, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. He says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, B'maniach Rosho Ben Barachav Askin. We're talking about somebody who didn't put his head down on the table. But he put his head lower down between his, near his legs. Okay, in a position, right? So what happened? Rava Amar. He says, Mava Ein Keva Lashem. There is no fixed time for sleep. Tane Chada Yashen Adam Betfilin. Right? Shenat Ari. Yes, there is. We do teach in one place. Okay. Right, that one person may take a short uh, nap, let's say, with their tefillin on. Avalo shenat keva, but not a regular, the deeper sleep. Vatanya ida, and we have another bright that teaches as follows: bein keva, bein arim, regardless of whether it's a fixed or a short nap. Okay, vatanya ida. And we have another writer that teaches lo keva veloari, neither a longer sleep nor a short nap, right? Lo kasha. We don't have to say that that's problematic. Why? Ha, do not keep laho bide. In one case, we're talking about somebody who's simply holding the tefillin in the hand, right? Vaha de manche bereshe. And in another case, we're talking about somebody who's put it on his head already. Ha, the Paris Sudra Aluye. And in another case, we're talking about somebody, he's, it's in his uh, tele, it's in his bag, or he put a cover on it. That's not sleeping with his pillow. The first price, the first explanation is that even an Ariadic sheen is you're going to drop the pillow. The second is you're wearing them, then you can doze off a little, but not sleep. sleep. And the third, if there's no distinction, 
is <laughs> when you put the two Turn in the away. Center. If you look back at the price, it does not say wearing. It says with filling, with filling. Right. So they have the grit of the ground to get these different okay. Tani Rami Bar Yecheskin. Okay, Kadei Hiluch Meya Ama. Right, Vakama Shainat Ari. What do we mean by a short nap? All right, Tani Rami Bar Yecheskin. Kadei Hiluch Meya Ama. Enough to walk. How far? He says. Okay, you walk from here to at least Yarmouth. All right. That's less, than, less than that. 150 feet. Yarmouth E. Okay. <laughs> yeah, walk to Yarmouth E. Okay. Tanya Nami Hachi. We also learn the following. Ayoshain but Filin. Vera Ek Keri. Ochez Biritsua. Okay. He's so the one who has. Uh, uh, holding on to his, he's sleeping in his tefillin and he has a, a situation, uh, a seminal omission. He is not supposed to grab the bias, okay, but take the ritsuas and remove the tefillin immediately using the ritsuas, right? Right? Ve'eno ochez b'katsitsa. Top of Kafvav Amud Beis. Okay, you cannot touch the box. It's right. Divrei Rabbi Yaakov. That's the view of Rabbi Yaakov. The Chachamim Amrim, but the sages say, Yoshein Adam B'Tfilin Sheinat Ari. A person may sleep with their Tfilin. Okay, I'm not sure if it meant with it without just holding it or not didn't happen. No, 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 that was the previous. Right. Okay. Price, right. The, so what happens? A temporary sleep. Avalo shenat keva, not with a longer sleep. Vakama shenat ari, and how much, how long here do we say it is a, a nap? Kadehi luch mea ama. Again, the same distance. Right? That's now, where you sort, is the source. Right? Now, Amar Rab, says Rab. Asur la adam lishen biyom yoter mishenat asus. All right, this is with filling, without filling, you're not supposed to take a nap. Right, no siestas, gentlemen. That's what it's telling us. Senior, right? Why? Because theoretically, it's going to take a time away from your learning. Okay. All right, but you could nap as long as a horse can nap. Now, how long does a horse nap? Let's see. We'll see. The kama shenat asus, and how long can a horse? By the way, remember horses sleep standing up. Okay. So how long is that? Shitim nishme, sixty breaths. Which does not mean what we think. Right. Amar abai says abai. Shunte the mar kidarav. Right. So what is abai's point? Okay. That uh, basically. He's saying that the that uh, that tells us his sleep of the master, right? Right. His his sleep was like that of the master was like that of the okay. Well, the rav kid the rebbe, and a nap of rav was like the nap of rebbe. Well, the rebbe kid the david, and the nap of of rebbe was like King David. And like David was like that of a horse. Right? And the horse was 60 breaths. Okay, let's, uh, let's finish a little bit of Gemara, then I'll come back to your question. Okay? All right? Okay, Abai have a niyim kidema el mi pumpadita the bay kobe. Right, this statement uh, I had a little bit of a problem with. Right, okay, I'm going to translate it. Our scroll says Abai would doze by day for as long as it takes to travel from pumpadita to bay kobe. In other words, the question: if we were just told. That it said that the nap was mea ama 150 feet, 
Okay, now it's true that Bay Kuve was a suburb of Pompadour. Yeah. But, they don't know how but we don't know that's exactly the case. We don't know exactly how close or how far it was. If you look in the Rishayna, yeah. it goes anywhere from five hours to just five minutes. Right. So, All right, there's a big difference. Okay. Kari Ale Rav Yosef. And Rav Yosef said him, Admatai Atzeel Tishkal. He's calling a baye. A lazy, good for nothing bum, right? Exactly. Ad matai at sale tishkav, matai takum mishnatach, citing a pasuk. When are you going to get up and pay more attention to your learning? Remember, Rav Yosef was a bias Rav. He was his teacher. Tanu Rabbani, a new bright, a nichnas lishen bayom, one who goes in to sleep during the day. Right, in other words, theoretically, you shouldn't. No. Okay, all right, what happens? We've just said that ideally a person should not take naps during the day because a Talmud or a, a sage, it, it takes away from their time of learning. But let's say that the situation where one needs to nap during the day. Well, I, well, I'll come back to it, Sam. I, I, I won't forget. I'm not. I won't forget the issue. All right. Tanu Rabbanu, the brighter teachers. Anichnas lishen bayom. This brighter says, what about one who does go to sleep in his home during the day? Okay. Ratsa cholates. If he wants, he can remove his film. Ratsa mania. If he wants to, okay, he can leave them on. Balaila cholates. At night, one removes that film. Ve'eno mania. And does not leave them on. Divrei Rabbi Nasi. That's the view of Rabbi Nasi. Now, Rabbi Yossi Omen says, Rabbi Yossi, Hayiladim. And I'm surprised they use that term here. It's young but, right, it's, it's young men who are, it's the yeshiva light, okay, who are married, okay, and so on. Le'olam cholzin, they always remove their, must remove their tefillin. Ve'enan manichin, and they don't to leave them on. Nepnei shirigilin betum'ah. Okay, because they are used to doing certain activities that could result in, uh, in uh, impurity. So, well, whatever. Lema, shall we say then, Kasava Rabbi Yossi, that this means that Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion, Balkeri Asur Lahaniach Tfilin, that someone who has a, 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 a mission. Okay, is uh, forbidden to put on food. He's asking, is the Tanah Zezra expand even to where he Okay, well, we'll see. Amar Abaye, he says, Abaye, Biladim v'nishotehen imahen askin. We're talking about these young men with their wives. That's what we're dealing with. Sheme yavo lidei hergel davar. Lest they... Do you know what they can do Right, lest they uh, the get used to the fact. Okay? Yeah, yeah, lest they do that uh, in the middle of the day. Okay? Which elsewhere in the Gemara it tells us you can't. Can. Exactly. But reality is reality. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Tanu Rabban. Shachach. Vishimash mita tobit filin. What happens, however, if one of these young guys forgot <laughs> to remove his filin? And uh, a little risky. All right, and uh, what happens? A no ochez lo birtsua v'lo b'kitzitza. He does not grab to remove the tefillin either with the strap or with the box. Ad she yitol yadav v'yitleim mepnei she hayadayim askaniotim. He must wash his hands first, and then he can go and uh, remove his tefillin. Because hands are busy. Okay, in other words, hands are at various places in the body. What, what happened to SFDAS? Uh... <laughs> don't, 
They figure for that act, you don't have Hesech Das. That's why we don't wear it. Right. 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 Matnitin, our Mishnah. New Mishnah. Okay, let's try to finish up. Okay. And then we'll get the Sam's point. Matnitin, Ma'aseh. We have a situation. Okay. Now, we're talking, first we were talking about sleeping in the sukkah. Why did we deal with sleeping with the sukkah at such length? Because of the issue of the fact that we've just seen in the Mishnah that we just are finishing, that there actually is a kula with regards to eating and drinking vis-a-vis -vis the Mishnah, as opposed to sleeping in the Mishnah. The kula is that you can eat a snack outside the sukkah. That's not the case, it would appear, with regards to sleeping in the sukkah. So I'm just, though I'm not forgetting your question, Sam, I'm just bringing it around so Making that we, right, so that we can see, understand the flow of the Gemara, and then come back to your question, all right? Okay, Maaseh, now we're coming back to the issue, since we've mentioned this whole issue of the leniency with regards to eating and drinking, a new Mishnah is going to touch on a situation, okay? So we follow the flow of the Mishnah. Okay. There once was an incident where they brought for to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai some cooked foods and right, for him to taste. And in addition, Ula Rabban Gamliel, Shnei Kotavot, they brought him two large dates. Vidali Shelmayim, Adli Shelmayim, and a pail of water, okay, afterwards, because the dates would make him thirsty. Va'amru, and they both said, Pe'alum Masuka, bring these foodstuffs to the surface. Ukashir not knew, though, the Rabbi Tzado. On the other hand, we know that when they gave Rabbi Tzado some food, Okhel Pachot Mikabetza, it was food that was less than the amount of an egg's worth, egg volume. Not <clears throat> Luba He took it in a, it was uh, bread. okay, didn't want to touch the bread. he took it in a kerchief, a handkerchief, a napkin, whatever, right? Vachlu chutz the sukkah, and he ate it outside of the sukkah, the lobi And he didn't say a bracha after it. Right? He didn't bench. Now, let's see if that's what the Gemara tells us. Right. So what happens? Gemara asks the following question. Maasel is store. Are we saying there that this Maase comes to contradict what the previous Mishnah said about being able to eat a temporary or a snack outside? Okay. Okay, something is missing, and this is how we have to teach it. <laughs> if someone wants to be more stringent with oneself, machmir, he's permitted to be more stringent. But that is not showing any sort of pride or heightened uh, showing off. Right, and the incident also comes to tell us that it says that he brought him a cooked item, all right, to taste. And to Rabban Gamliel, they brought these two large dates and a pail of water. Va'amru, and they said, we got to go over just a bit, right? And they said, ve'alum v'sukah, and they said, bring them up over to the sukkah. Ukshin natnu the rabbi tzadok v'ochel pachot mikabetza, and they brought to rabbi tzadok food that was less than the shear of a egg volume, right? Natlu v'mapah, he took it with a, uh, 
a, in a kerchief, a napkin, whatever. Okay. By the way, I couldn't find that it said it was bread. I it has to be, otherwise, he it with that. Hold it with his hand. To... Right. 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 Also, with the issue of the bracha, Ron is teaching that he held you only need a day as a bench, not a design. All right, I know I accept what you're saying. I'm just saying I couldn't find in either art school or Cohen that that was the key. All right, not Mubamapa, but Achlu Chutzvasuka, Velo Be Racha Harab, and he didn't bench afterwards. Akabetsa, Bai Sukha. But as but what we're saying is an egg volume does require, okay, right? The sukkah. Lema tiyuit yufte the Rav Yosef Rabbayim. Shall we say that this is a proof text against Rav Yosef and Rabba and Abai, who says that uh, even that the kabeitza do have to eat it in the sukkah? Dilma pachod mi kabeitza. Okay, perhaps then the point is that if it's less than a beta, less than egg volume, you don't need to wash or to bless afterwards. We say, however, that a beya, an egg volume, does require washing and, and uh, blessing. And we'll stop right there. Now, to get back to Sam's question. Okay. How do I answer you, Sam? Okay, that was his question. Sam's question is, yeah, I'm, I'm going to phrase Sam's question this way. If sleeping in the sukkah, okay, it seems to be significantly more important. I can't say more important, but more, more stringent, more stringent, okay, than simply eating. Why is it today that people seem to be more lean? Okay, many. Okay, there are people that are, okay, that follow the rules that, that uh, do sleep in a circle. Okay, so I'll ask your, I'll answer your question first with a question, a good Jewish practice. What about if someone is married? <laughs> Sid is chuckling over there. I don't know. What about if somebody is married? Now you think about when you were young. A whole week in the sukkah without your wife is different. So she sleeps in the sukkah. That's the, that's not serious. Number one, we've already seen. Okay, Chaim, we already saw in the Gemara that it told us that you don't make the chuppah in the sukkah. Why? Because it's Sa'ar Khatan was one of the arguments. So likewise, I might argue that for a married person, there is Sa'ar in not being able to sleep with one. Now, you could say to me and come back and argue, well, maybe there's a situation during the time that he can't sleep with her. He has to sleep separately. Okay, how do you know that Sukkot is going to come out exactly at the same time? All right, <laughs> things like that. Okay, so that's one answer that I could give you. All right, okay, all right, that would be one answer. There were, right. there, there were lists in another circumstances for Okay, guys. Take care. Everybody be well. Thank you, Reb.